what is up you guys welcome back to my channel it is your favorite mogul Amani Jelena and I'm here because I have some more exciting news to tell you guys about the business world okay so before I start this video I want to say check the description box because start a business 1.0 and 2.0 are on sale right now they're both on sale for 69 dollars which is like crazy okay uh within that webinar you learn how to start a webinar from start to finish and with both uh webinars combined you do get a total of five vendors okay that you can uh do business with now, the last thing that I do want to say is also, if you guys do not understand this information, because I get a lot of emails about disputes um, and chargebacks and all that good stuff. If you guys do not understand this information, I want you guys to book a coaching session with me. There is no reason you should be going into business uh, if you do not know the critical information about starting one, okay? So, I have... Uh, coaching calls available for all price ranges they are all affordable I have from emergency coaching calls that are 15 minutes if you only have maybe like one or two questions all the way to our coaching calls so check the description box check it out check out that uh, start a business 1.0 and 2.0 because like I said they are a bundle deal for $69 uh, which you can't beat that and like I said it also includes five vendors and these are five different vendors so let's talk disputes so when you are learning information i understand it is critical to learn every piece of the information that you're learning so when it comes to disputes some of you may know what it means but others may not so a dispute occurs when a card holder questions your payment with their card issuer okay and that uh a synonym for disputes is also a chargeback okay so you guys might be a little familiar with that terminology opposed to the dispute or vice versa okay so that is what a dispute is now if you guys do not know I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of history about disputes as of 1975 the Fair Credit Billing Act was put in place to protect customers to give them this right to open up disputes for unauthorized transactions okay so just that's just a little history for you guys in case you guys don't know where disputes came from and all of this stuff okay like I said it's good to know all the information instead of just the important information out of certain things okay so this video is going to be all about protecting your business from chargebacks okay once you guys start to make consistent money with your business and you start to see consistent sales and all that good stuff disputes are going to happen now if you haven't reached this point yet it is good to just be just have the information on hand to know exactly what a dispute is how can you pr protect yourself how can you prevent it I will say it is not good to have multiple disputes so you need to know how to deal with them and you need to know how to uh, contact the banks okay as far as dealing with them but we'll talk about that a little later in this video but uh, like I said, this video is all about just protecting yourself, okay? So the first way, I want you guys to grab a piece of paper, a notebook, save this video, do whatever you have to do to always keep this video on hand. Don't forget to share this video to help the next business owner and so forth. So that very first uh, precaution that I want you guys to make as far as protecting your business is following the processor's protocol. Now, if you guys don't know what a processor is a processor is the bank or the credit card processor that you're processing payments through especially online payments okay now each and every different payment processor has its own protocol so depending on whichever payment processor you are physically working working with you need to uh, read their rules regulations policies to see exactly how they deal with disputes okay and some of those payment processors are but are not limited to because they are there are tons of payment processors out there but some of these are pretty popular ones okay and i'm talking about paypal stripe braintree amazon payments the cash app square payments we pay uh authorized.net d wola and world pay okay and then alipay is also a big one as well so you can look into any of those and if you have any of those you definitely want to look at their policies to see exactly what they accept how they deal with the disputes uh and so forth because i'm gonna be honest i've dealt with well i deal with 
two payment processors, which is Stripe and PayPal. I have my doubts about both, but you know, they, they get the job done and so forth. But each, both of those have two totally different separate or two totally separate protocols as far as dealing with disputes. So you just want to make sure you're hip to everything so that when a dispute does happen, you're not like dumbfounded or in the dark about what's going on, okay? Now, if you guys are interested in this unit that I have on, this is a 24 inch uh, front lace wig. It is available on Allure 96, so go ahead and check it out. If you are also interested in wholesale and Allure 96 drop shipping program, uh, check the description box as well because we have an amazing drop shipping program that is legit blowing up. So I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back for that. Um, so definitely go and check it out and I'll leave that stuff right below. Okay. Moving forward as far as the prevention for chargebacks for your business, okay? The next one is gonna be use clear payment descriptors. Now, what a payment descriptor is, is basically the name in which is going to pop up on your customer's bank statement. And these description names are basically the identification of your business. So with me, I own a hair company by the name Allure 96. If you were to purchase something from Allure 96, nine times out of 10 on that bank statement, it's either gonna say Allure 96 or it's gonna say Amani Julina because that is what I operate my business under. Just so people know like, hey, when they're uh, monthly, um, bank statements come back and they're looking over everything to make sure everything checked out right that they know like hey I purchased this hair from Allure 96 or I purchased this hair from Amani Jelena okay I'm the face of my brand so a lot of people put two and two together so that is an easy descriptor for me and my business and for you it would be the same if your company's name is Kimmy Extensions you want your identifying details to be Kimmy extensions, okay? So moving on, something else that you want to take very, 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 very seriously is dealing with customer service issues promptly, okay? Whenever a chargeback comes or disputes comes through, the payment processor that you are using usually sends notifications. I'm pretty sure all of them has, all of them uses the pro appropriate notifications um, when when uh, disputes are coming, whether it's through email or they just send you a notification through the app. So if you are dealing with a customer and your customer seems totally dissatisfied in your service, in your business, in the product, whatever you are selling, if they seem dissatisfied, do your best to get in touch with them and try to resolve the problem quickly, okay? And by doing that, uh, it allows you to dismiss that dispute quickly and e efficiently, okay? It's like, for instance, with PayPal. PayPal gives you the opportunity for the seller and the buyer to resolve the issue before it's escalated into a claim and so forth, okay? So like I said, if you sense a customer who is dissatisfied, you jump on that tail, okay? You jump on their tail and you try to fix the issue and you try to make that dissatisfied customer satisfied, okay? And then also it, it builds your reputation as well because you never want to leave a customer dissatisfied. Now, something big that I want you guys to write down in a red, red, red marker or pen, okay, is to learn to spot warning signs of fraud, okay? You and your business team need to pay attention to the red flags that, that inform your business on suspicious activity, okay? Such as security codes not matching accordingly or billing a ship billing and shipping addresses not matching because I'm gonna tell you if someone from Arkansas orders something and they want it delivered to Arkansas but their credit card is billed and their billing address for their credit card is located all the way in Rhode Island usually that's something wrong and that's typically credit card fraud okay so if you see these red flags you as the business owner uh, need to properly educate your team on how to deal with this stuff especially if you have a team if you do things solo you need to know how to deal with these things appropriately you need to know like hey let me contact uh, this person uh, this card let me do my own research on the back end to see like hey did this person really order this or hey did someone steal their card and I'm gonna send out this merchandise 
and then I'm also going to have to re uh, refund the money. So then you you are double screwed because you just missed out on merchandise and also you missed out on three to four hundred dollars worth of cash. OK, that is a no, no. So definitely keep your eyes peeled open. Teach your team how to keep their eyes peeled open. So certain things like this don't happen. And also pay attention to those names. If someone under the, the name Elizabeth James places an order with you guys, but on that credit card, it says a completely different name and a completely different address. Something is typically wrong, okay? So when things like that with me happen, I do my investigation. If everything checks out, I'll send that order out. If everything does not check out, I will dismiss that order, send a refund, and send a can cancellation notice to that email provided, okay? So keep your eyes open. Now, the next thing, which is really big, and I have an organization video coming soon to show you guys how I do it so that you guys can mimic that if you like my method, it's, it's going to be keeping, keeping good records. You want to keep good, accurate records of your customers' uh, purchase dates, authorization information that they must provide before checking out just in case you need to then fight a charge back or just in case you then need to uh, have evidence for a claim uh, that you're dealing with. So something, for example, if you ship out all of your orders and all of your orders have signature confirmation on them, that is good for the business owner just due to the fact if they try to come back and say like, hey, this is a dispute, they're opening up a dispute on you. But if you have certain evidence to present to the banks to show them like, hey, I did the right thing. I sent out my product. I didn't scam anyone. I sent them exactly what they ordered. Look at this signature that they provided for me. That is evidence that you would then be able to submit. So you want to keep everything organized, clean, and easily able to reach and organize to the point where like hey if something came up you can you can figure out who's who who did what how did she order this when did she order this what did this person order what state was it sent to what card number they used you have that information so you need to keep good records of everything but unfortunately people do fraudulent things we live in a day and age where cracking cards and doing fraudulent uh fraudulent things as far as credit cards and debit cards are present okay so unfortunately there are some things you cannot do to protect yourself from fraudulent chargebacks okay but by keeping records of everything it allows you to be able to present information if a customer is just unfairly trying to attack your brand or take advantage of you okay because those those customers exist as well okay now the last thing that I do want to say about chargebacks and disputes is that you only want to fight back when it makes sense to fight back okay now be aware when chargebacks happen you have to pay an additional fee for a chargeback to go back to uh to the customer and depending on the payment processor that you use i've seen fees up to three dollars all the way to fifteen dollars and if you're having multiple chargebacks you're giving away a lot of additional free money that you necessarily need to and then unfortunately if you do have a lot of chargeback which i believe i said this in the beginning of the video it hurts your relationships with your banks okay so i want you guys to think smarter not harder and I want you guys to to analyze everything I want you guys to absorb this information to the best of your abilities replay this video share this video subscribe to this channel because I will be putting out tons of videos like this on ways to protect yourself unfortunately I have been a victim of fraudulent chargebacks um chargebacks of people trying to take advantage of my business on numerous occasions okay it's going to happen it's something that you cannot can you can't say it's not going to happen to you because if you're a popping brand and you are uh, successful as far as like your sales go and things like that it's going to happen so you need to know the proper precautions you need to make for your business to prevent these things from happening you can only prevent them um you can only prevent them not saying that you're never going to get a charge back because you unfortunately if you are serious about your business and you're having good sales it's going to happen it's always some dissatisfied customer but it's your job as a business owner to make things right okay so like i said if you guys do not understand this information book a coaching session with me i am here to help you guys um all of my prices are extremely affordable, like I said in the beginning of this video, so take advantage of them while they are low. And then last but not least, like I said, I have 
two bundle deals going on for $69 and you get five vendors with that as well and they are they are new vendors as well and that 69 special is for my how to start a business 1.0 and 2.0 and within both of those webinars I speak a lot about um, chargebacks and disputes within that webinar too if you guys want to know like some more information regarding this so i love each and every one of you do not forget to subscribe do not forget to check out that description box and i will see you guys in my next video bye